In this video, I'll demonstrate some of the many features of CorelDRAW's paragraph text. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. I have this document open in which I want to place a few paragraph text objects. I'll activate the text tool and drag two corners of the text frame. As discussed in a previous tutorial, I can start typing text or paste it in from another source. I could also open another CorelDRAW file to grab the text from there. But be aware that if you open a file from before version X6, you'll be asked to update text. Look for this blue bar across your workspace and be sure to click the Update button. What this will allow you to do is make use of the Open Text features as well as align text with the baseline grid, which I'll demonstrate farther on. But let's say I'm not ready to add the actual text. For now, I just want to lay out the page to see how the text will look. With the Pick tool, I'll right-click in the frame and choose Insert Placeholder Text. This brings in the standard lorem ipsum text with my default font and size for paragraph text. There is just enough placeholder text inserted to fit the frame exactly. I can change text properties in the property bar or text docker, and I'll also assign a color. I could also add bullets or drop caps. As discussed in a previous tutorial, I can also use the icons at the corner of the text frame to adjust kerning, and with the shift key pressed, I can adjust word spacing. This icon controls the letting, or line spacing. I could also do this editing with the shape tool. The paragraph section of the text docker also has options for adjusting line spacing, as well as paragraph indents and paragraph separation. I can expand this section for character and word spacing options. Since making changes to the text, the text frame has turned red, which indicates that the text exceeds the size of its frame. One option is to resize the frame, but even this larger frame isn't large enough. To make the text fit perfectly, I'll right-click in the frame again and choose Fit Text to Frame. The font size adjusts to fit. The text in this frame is a bit unwieldy at the current width, so in the text docker I'll set the number of columns in the frame to 3. If I wanted to change column formatting, I would click the three-dot icon. I could change the gutters, set unequal column widths, etc. The layout toolbar also has a column icon, and I can access this toolbar by right-clicking in a blank toolbar area and choosing Layout. I also have a few graphics for this document, which are on a layer I'll now turn on. The text runs on top of the graphics, so I'll adjust text wrapping in these spots. I'll marquee select this group of objects, and in the Properties Docker I'll open the Summary tab and open the options for wrapping paragraph text. Currently there is no wrap, but I can flow left or right, straddle around the graphic contour, set a square border, or go above and below. I can adjust the offset here, or lock the object so that it can't be moved. Now if I move the graphic, or resize the text frame, the text will adjust. I'll do the same to wrap around the other two graphics. I now want to change the arrangement of text frames for more flexibility in placing and sizing. But first, I want to save the current text as a style so that I can easily bring it back. I have the Object Styles docker open, and I'll click the plus icon to add a new style set. Then I'll drag the text frame directly onto this new style set to fill in its properties for outline, fill, character, paragraph, and frame. I'll name this style set Bedtime Story. While I'm at it, I'll create a style for the chapter heading as well. Styles can be applied to both paragraph and artistic text. These style sets will be available while I'm working in this document, but if I wanted them available for other documents, I would use this icon to export them. Then I'd use the same icon in the next document to import the styles. Now I'll remove the text frame and create a new one in the middle. I'll insert placeholder text and drag the bedtime story style set into the frame. I could also have used the Apply to Selected button. I still have three columns, but I'll change the style to have one column. Now I'll double-click to edit the text 
and make the first words a new color and size so they can be easily seen. Then I'll select the text frame again. I want the text on this page to start in a frame to the left, so I'll click the Text Flow tab at the top of the frame, then drag a new frame where I want it. The text now starts here and flows to the original frame. Similarly, I can click the Text Flow tab at the bottom for a frame whose text continues after this one. All three frames are now linked. If I edit the text and add new lines, the flow updates in the other frames. And if I right-click in any frame to fit the text, the text in all three frames will adjust. Note that when I check this text in the text docker, some of the little boxes are green while others are orange. Orange indicates a change made from the default properties in the text style. For example, the font size. If I click on this, I can revert back to the property in the style. Also note that when I zoom in closely, the text lines in neighboring frames don't align, but I can use the baseline grid to fix this. I'll display this grid by choosing View, Grid, Baseline Grid. This grid looks like lined notebook paper. I'll select all three frames and right-click in any frame and choose Align to Baseline Grid. Now the text neatly follows the lines. To adjust the grid spacing, I'll choose Layout, Document Options, open the Grid tab, and reduce the baseline grid spacing. I'll turn off the baseline grid. I still need space for more text frames, and rather than add more frames to this page, I want the text to continue into frames on a second page. I'll right-click on page 1 to duplicate it, keeping all contents. I'll change the chapter name on the second page. The text frames on this page aren't linked to one another like the text frames on page 1 are, and the text here is copied from page 1, not flowing from page 1. To get the text flowing from page 1 to page 2, I'll return to page 1, select the last frame, and click its lower text flow tab. On page 2, I'll click where I want the text to continue. I now have an indicator that the text is flowing from the previous page. I can link this frame to the next, and that one to the next. And when I return to page 1 and select the last frame, I can see where the text is flowing. I'm now going to remove all paragraph text from page 1 and from page 2 as well. Now I'll show how to change the default placeholder text. I have the text I want to use saved in an RTF file called placeholder.rtf. This file must be placed in my Documents, Corel, Corel Content folder. If this file is in the wrong folder, or has the wrong name, the default lorem ipsum text will be used. Now when I draw out a frame and insert placeholder text, my own text will be used, and I can choose to keep or discard whatever formatting I had in the RTF file. With this frame selected, I'll apply the style. To make this text flow to the next page, I'll click the Text Flow tab at the bottom. When I open page 2, there are no frames to link to, but I have an outline of where the frame would be if I wanted it in the same spot as on page 1. I can click in this outline to duplicate the text frame and add the flowing text. Finally, the advantage of using text styles is that whatever changes I make will update everywhere. I'll change the font and color for both styles, and the same changes appear on page 1 as well. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on paragraph text in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.